What's it like to be a financial planner? Today, John and I are going to talk about a day in the life of a financial planner. We've got decades of experience and we'll talk about how we got going and what it's like now. Hi, I'm Bridget Sullivan Rommel and I've got a fee-only financial planning practice in Chicago, Illinois. And I'm John Shearer. I've got a fee-only financial planning practice in Middleton, Wisconsin. Before we get into a day in the life of a financial planner, we want to remind everybody to hit that subscribe button, help other people find this content on YouTube. So with that, let's let's talk about a day in the life. This is going to be an interesting conversation. Yeah, well, I think we're going to structure this as what it's like in the beginning and what it's like now. Because the day in the life is radically different when you're starting out than when you are established. And John and I've had my practice, my financial planning practice since 2008. So that's 50, over 15 years. Yeah. You've had yours at least 20. And then we had... John had insurance experience. I had tax experience even before that. Yeah. So uh, hard, hard to think back yeah, on some exactly. of those, some of those things. Get the cobwebs I, out. I keep thinking about what's that movie Office Space? I think it is. Really, you know, what, what do you do here? I just kind of sit around and I'm like, what do I do all day long? I'm gonna have to think about this one. This will be interesting. Yeah. Well, and it is interesting when you think about it from the beginning of yeah. the financial planning practice. Um, so at the beginning, first of all. The reason we're starting about it at the beginning is because if we talk about what our lives are like are now, they sound pretty damn great. And people will be like, great, I want that. But that's not actually the key is getting through to that. Yeah. You know, and you don't start out with the, what we have now. And so when we were starting out, I would say I tried to spend 80% of my time on marketing, which was hard because I didn't, I was still trying to learn financial planning and set up my business. So I was pretty obsessed with learning it all and particularly learning how to communicate about what I was doing. That's, I mean, that, that's those, those three things really. That's, that's the hard part we're talking about as, a, as yeah. a starting your own business with things, right? Yeah. And, and there's, I, I think anyway, the three components, you've got the technical component. Right. How do you deliver good advice to people and know what's going on, right? I mean, that's huge. But then if you don't have anybody to give that advice to, it's no good. If you have all the knowledge in the world, but you can't, don't have any customers that will, you know, take your advice, right? right? So you got to go out and do the marketing to get people. And then you're also running a business too, right? right. So you got to set up whether that's compliance or the administration, you need a website. I mean, all these sorts right. of things, all the stuff that needs to get done. And I think when somebody's starting off, it can be easy to focus on any one of those areas at the expense of the others. And, and if you can just imagine, right, if all you do is marketing, but you don't have any technical skills, that doesn't go very far. Right. And if you've got all kinds of technical technical skills, but nobody that wants to pay you for that, that doesn't go very far either. And if you got those two things, but you're running a shoddy business operation, that's also not a recipe for success. So it, it is some balance, but I, you know, I don't know if, if 80% was the right number for me, but certainly north of 50% is, hey, in the beginning, you got to go out and find people and, and to, to work with and start to, to, you know, get used to having those communication, right? For me, I, I had my CFP, I knew, I knew the financial planning stuff, but how do you communicate with folks and, and make it effective? right you got the knowledge but how do you deliver that knowledge to people once they come in it's a skill that communication I mean, that's the fourth part of the of that stool is how do you communicate with people and and balancing those you know those different skill sets and developing them as you move along right right and so for me at the beginning i would try to do um like say networking events and go to networking events and then i would add i i'm a little bit uh introverted I'm kind of right on the. I'm right at, actually when I test. I'm right in the middle, right. Exactly, yeah. But I go into a networking event. Not my favorite thing to do. And so I would go to a networking event, um, and I would have a list of what my goals were for at the networking event, and be like, meet three people I don't know, talk to somebody I do know, um, and I wouldn't try to do an elevator pitch or anything like that. I would just try to talk to people I know, tell them what I'm doing mm -hmm. and try to tell them that I liked what I was doing. But that was about it. And that was success. You know, like, okay, I did it. But just getting out in the community and letting people know what I was doing, that that's actually important. Get it, you, nobody yep. is coming to your office and storming your office and saying they want to work with you. It's like you have to get out there and tell people. And the other thing is it's such a long game. You, yeah. you know, you don't get immediately results at all. So if you're, it takes really five years before all of this gels, I would say, 
to like, okay, I've, I have my first, my clients, I know what I'm doing. This is good. I'm going to have a business here. Yep. And so that, that's a long time frame. Right. right. No, <laughs> For, no. Yeah, that takes a long and, time. You know, you have to be in the right success situation. after five years, right? Yeah. You yeah. know, it's, it's interesting as I think about that, and you're, as you're describing that, I remember I remember thinking back when I was starting off, if I just had enough clients that all I had to do was come in and do the financial planning work, right? Like, that's the part that I really loved about it. If I just had enough where I could be busy all day working on plans and working on tax tax planning and those sorts of things, that would be awesome. And then I got to a stage where I was able to do that, and maybe that's a good segue into what mm -hmm. it looks like today is, then it got to be, geez, I've done that for a long time. Right. Now I don't want to do all that detail stuff anymore. For for me and, and the business now, it's about it's still about marketing, right? about putting messaging out there right. in the world on things, but it's more about being a thought leader and really providing the advice to, to clients and right. now we've got both of us have people that that do more of the financial planning for us right and sort of developing that side of things yeah well and it's drawing on all this experience so especially because both of us have been in the industry for a long time you know it's really a wisdom industry and so the yeah. experience that we've got back to all you know the stone age or whatever right uh <laughs> it really actually helps because you've seen it before you yeah. know and that stuff comes into play and sometimes I'll tell people who are older that are career changers like that they'll be complaining about age discrimination in their industry uh, which is totally real and a totally a thing but in our industry it's the reverse age discrimination so there's I would say the younger people are discriminated against and the older people are more listened to mm -hmm. and so right I'm, <laughs> works for me right now. Yeah, right, you know? right. Yeah. A lot better now that I have less hair yeah, than I had exactly. 20 years ago, Going right? Going gray, no problem, yeah. you know? <laughs> you know, and it's interesting as you think about, you know, what we do, I think we're probably similar where it's, you know, looking and thinking about things, thinking about solutions right. for clients, right? Doing the research to figure out what's the next deliverable that we can do more so than the individual planning, but we've both got people working with us who do that planning and so we talk about what's the day in a life of, right. of their life is, is sort of in between the idea of starting off a business and having to build up all the client base. Now they come in and they've got the client base and they can really focus on some of those technical skills and those communication skills. So it's sort of in that middle ground right. of, of things, right? They don't have to do the strategic planning for the business that we do. They don't have to do the marketing, but they can really focus on that communication and part. and skill yeah. and part of those things right and so there's a different place for things when i first started i think the same when you there there weren't many places that were hiring people that right. did that sort of work right i don't love to just walk in and do the financial planning and it wasn't there today i think there's a lot more opportunities i know people are looking for folks to come in and do that financial planning stuff and for me it's those things that i've been there done that i can still do it but it's not as much fun for me compared to the other more vision helping people decide what they're going to do with their lives, helping them set what their goals are and how to get there, and then having somebody else do the, all right, what are the nuts and bolts of getting there? But there's a different opportunity, I think, today for that middle ground where you don't have to spend 80% of your time marketing, <laughs> and you're also not at a level where you can say, hey, I've been there, done that, here's a solution to right. things, but it's that middle ground, I think. Yeah, and so I've got three types of days. I've got uh, buffer <laughs> days, which are admin days, I've got client days, and I've got marketing days. So on my buffer day, I'm meeting with my uh, team and figuring out, okay, what's this week going to look like? We might be doing strategic planning. Uh, I might be going to a conference um, to learn more. Just I might be meeting with my peer group. I might be doing coaching, that, those types of activities. One of the things I think it's important to understand about the industry is that uh, there's an emphasis on what do you really want, what you want your life to be like. And again, this is not at the beginning. This mm -hmm. happens definitely after five years. Like, oh, what do I want? Oh, now that I've got you know a foothold, I can get things going. Okay, so we got admin days again. Might do coaching, but that's of most people in the industry. I think people are big proponents of coaching. Mm -hmm. So a lot of people get coaching, a lot of education. The client days, uh, just client meetings where I'm trying to be one on one with clients. These are my favorite. I love these days. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Just talking to clients, communicating. I try not to do too much. And the other thing, another part of the industry, for the, uh, especially for experienced advisors, is that everybody's happy when I'm happy. So I have to, that's 
Sounds good, right? I'm happy when I'm happy too, but but that's actually a responsibility. So that means for me, I can't try to do too much. Mm-hmm. I have to pace myself. So with client days, I've got to make sure that I pace myself. And then marketing days, super fun. Do things like this. Do things like, you know, work on um, getting the word out there. Because I think both John and I don't actually need to do this kind of like a YouTube show. Yeah. But it's like, uh, it's coming from a deep desire to be able to take my knowledge and I think you feel the same way and share it with a broader audience. Right. You know, and it's fun. Yeah, it's fun. So yeah. <laughs> exactly. And so, and we picked this because we picked the, uh, you know, this format because we find it fun. Yep. So uh, I find that fun. So it's at, at this stage in my career, I am really trying to fine tune. What do I find most fun? How can I do that more and more and more? Where am I most valuable? What can I do more? And again, not at the beginning of my practice, this wasn't like it, like that. When I'm talking now, people are like that sounds great. Yeah. But there's a big. It, it takes a long time to get there. It's interesting hearing you talk about how you segment your days, which I think is really awesome. We do we do client focused days too. We try to block them into a couple days in a row because you really get focused on helping clients and talking about. You talk about similar things mm-hmm. with everybody, right? So it gets a really good rhythm. And then I've got the the other work days where it's and we sort of combine whether it's marketing or team meetings or you know implementing new systems here in the office. But then I I, I take a real focus on I call them off days or free days. And because, and I think that ties in with with what we do for financial planning. And it's not investment advice necessarily. I mean, it's, that's part of it. But most people, when they say they're a financial advisor, what they mean is that they're working on collecting people's assets and putting them into an investment strategy. And that's about the extent of the in, the financial planning advice. Right. And so when when Nick first started working here, he had been working for somebody else, and we came. And I said, "Listen, I really want to work on this year. Our focus is on some of these systems we have." In the office and he said boy it's really refreshing where the goal is not how many new clients can we bring in this year and how much more money can we gather and it was about how we deliver service to clients provide value to people so it's just a little bit different so for me those free days are a lot of times when I'm off doing nothing in the office but that's the time when I'm thinking about oh this client situation and that how do we solve this problem and then, you know, I mean sometimes it's about investments but probably 90% of the time it's about this tax strategy or that goal that they said they had or how do we think about this way of passing money on to their kids in a meaningful fashion, all those sorts of things that have nothing to do with investments, but everything to do with their financial success. Mm -hmm. So for me, being away helps free me up to do some of those things, which is, again, something I didn't have the luxury of 20 years ago, but now I'm in a spot where it provides real value. Yeah. And I would say the same, like I, my free days are my creative days where my, and where my brain just can come up with great things for to help clients or even new programs that I want to implement in my practice. So it's, it's an interesting thing. And again, free days are actually vital for the happy advisor that helps all this thing go. Yep. So it's almost like being, when I had my tax practice, there's an ethos of like, it's okay if you're miserable, everybody expects you to be miserable, just work really hard, work as hard as you can. Um, and then that's success. And so, but the, it's a different situation here. Yep. If I'm burnt out, that's not, clients don't want it. That's well, not you're, what my you're not clients doing your, want. You're not doing your best for them. Right? Yeah. I mean, that's just the fact of the matter. That's not you what can't anybody be at your wants. Best for them. Yep. Yeah. yeah. And so it's a whole different uh, mindset, yep. which I like. It's yep. great. It's made me happier. Yeah. <laughs> so with that, I'm Bridget Sullivan Mermel. I've got a fee-only financial planning practice in Chicago, Illinois. And I'm John Shearer. I've got a fee-only financial planning practice in Middleton, Wisconsin. Both Bridget and I are members of the Alliance of Comprehensive Planners. So if you like what you hear on our show here, check out acplanners.org to find an advisor in your area. And please subscribe.